Every year, I choose one game to kickstart, and this year, I'm backing Avatar Legends, the role-playing game. This is a surprising choice for me because I'm not really an RPG gamer, so let me tell you why this is the game I'm getting behind. Thanks for watching Legendary Tactics. Beyond being a game based on arguably the best animated series on television, period, this officially licensed tabletop game has such a rich background context with five different eras of play that span from Kiyoshi's era all the way up to the events of Korra. So thematically, if you're like me and you can't get enough of Avatar, this will be a great way to extend your experience of the show and also a way to immerse yourself more deeply into the narrative, if that's even possible for most of you. The foundation of any good game is its mechanics, and this game uses the Powered by the Apocalypse framework. If you've played the Root RPG, this will look familiar. Here are some of the other games that use this system. These games are centered on resolving what characters do as moves. So when you do move X, for instance, then Y effect happens. For example, you bend a jet of water at a Fire Nation guard who's about to strike your friend. Then a particular effect is triggered, whether you're successful or not. Like most RPGs, this will be a dice shaker for the players, but not for the GM, and that's what's distinctive about this particular system. So if you're successful, you might knock the guard off balance and defend your friend, or you might fail and deflect the attack at an innocent bystander. I'll likely end up being the game master most of the time I play this, which is not something I'm actually generally known for, but having scripted outcomes helps me a lot as someone who isn't really practiced in that art. I really, really love narrative-driven games, so this game takes me one step deeper into the story while keeping the rules overhead fairly light, or lightish, I should say. But overall, the rules and mechanics of this game I think will appeal to me very much. So let's take a look at components, because ultimately when you're kickstarting, that's really what you're looking for. If you're at the $75 level, the Otter Penguin level, then you'll get the core book with all the base rules. The adventure booklets, they come as digital PDFs, and at the time I'm making this video, there's 18 of these, so it seems like this game will be fairly extensive. Uh, the game comes with a pack of 12 customized avatar dice, a foreign nation's cloth map, a 54 card combat action deck, you only need one of those, a dice bag, a set of five journals, so players can take notes as they play, it also comes with five softback core adventure booklets and the expanded play booklet. Oh, and also the utterly useless but still fun to have White Lotus Pie Show tile. That's just kind of cool to have. Overall, this sounds like a lot of material, but really what you're backing here is actually the story and the system. There's really not that many usable pieces that come with the game or functional pieces. Um, it's not like Gloomhaven with lots and lots of components. This is a game that'll happen primarily in the imaginations of the players, and it will emphasize story, not hex crawling. So you know what? I'd like to have a game like this in my collection, and I think this is the one. Let's take a look now at the combat system. It looks as though the designers don't want the bending heroes to be too OP compared with the characters like Asami and Sokka, who we all love, and even though they don't have powers, we want characters like that to still have a place in this game. So the system draws on a lot of elements of the series, such as choosing your training in one of the four elements, or whether you're a martial artist, a weapons expert, or a technologically based character. So bending and fighting are both part of the game's combat system. I really like that. And you'll also choose your fighting style. Perhaps you use metal fans like the Kiyoshi Warriors, or maybe you're more of a tiny knives kind of person. This will let you have access to extra abilities like earth sync, lightning redirection, or chi blocking. I'm just getting excited thinking about all the possibilities. This is going to be fun. So we should look at the characters for a moment. The story is driven by playbooks, or at least when you design your character, the playbooks will help you with that. So are you the hammer, or a prodigy, an idealist, or an icon? This lets you design your characters quickly, and it gives you your archetype, your motivations, your ties to the rest of the group, and your abilities. Dungeons & Dragons players will likely find this very familiar. It's a bit of a variation on that approach to character building. There's tons of customization here, which I'm sure RPG lovers will really dig. And if you're looking to interact with Aang or Uncle Iroh or other characters, they're called legends in this game. And they'll appear and maybe they'll be your master and they'll teach you new skills, or perhaps they're your foe, depending on the circumstance. So. 
It's not very surprising that tons of records have been shattered with this Kickstarter launch. This will be a huge game. They broke a million on the first day and it hasn't slowed down since. So if the court of public opinion counts for anything, this game should be a massive winner. Let me know in the comments why you're backing this or why you decided to take a pass. But for me, I've already pledged for this one. And remember that sometimes life is like a tunnel. You can't always see the light at the end, but if you keep moving, you'll come to a better place. This is Legendary Tactics. Thanks for watching.